have the element of surprise because nobody's gonna expect us to be this crazy. That is they true. The storm is a terrible mistake. Yeah, they're, they're not, not gonna be <laughs> expecting an attack now. Like they're just not. It's true. They're also, I mean, like like Red Claw has said, like this. It seems like they're they're attacking several problems at once. So they're probably very busy on their own. Uh, in in addition to all that, mm -hmm. um, but you guys are gonna take some pretty some pretty significant penalties. Uh, I mean, I guess uh, if it is through Castle Ward, let's say you know around where the Emerald Gyre is, that'll be kind of like the halfway point, and we can maybe assess how we feel like if we feel it's just too much well i'm gonna i mean yeah you guys can always dip out if it seems too bad but what i am going to impose on all of you for sure is that you're going to have the deafened condition uh this is going to last for essentially a couple hours you're just drenched the storm is loud it is thunderous you're fighting against the the winds the rain everything that's going on and uh essentially you're your perception checks uh, automatically critically fail uh, that require hearing. So, like, th like it's too loud to listen in on something that is going on. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is... Yeah. Just throw it here so everybody... Yeah, and then the other one is going to be... I'm going to give you guys three... Um, fatigue three... Check out fatigue. So this is a minus one status penalty to AC and saving throws. AC and saves, I see that. And that doesn't go away until you get a full night's rest. Oh boy. Can you increase the effectiveness of fatigued? Like I'm, I'm, I clicked on fatigued on the on the sheet, and it's not letting me increase. Um, uh, actually, apply that. That's a good question. Yeah, no, it, it it applied to my AC. Like my AC dropped when I did it, but um, I can't increase it to like fatigued two or fatigued three. Oh, actually, I, hold on. I don't think rules is written. It works Man. that way. But if I were to give you guys other penalties, um, the ones that I would give instead of that one that can go up like that are, like, way too detrimental. Right, right. We might be able to just, you know, manually minus three from from everything. Like, AC is not that bad, and ho hopefully we won't be making any saving throws, right? So. He says as we walk yeah, into the yeah, game, that's... absolute mage. <laughs> Do we need to add these to our sheets now, or like, is this part way through the storm? So, I'm, there's no real events besides just taking on the brunt of this storm. Uh, even like the the fighting between the Rada and the City Watch has, as I mean, people have just gone for cover at this point. Not to say that the fighting won't start back up as soon as everyone's has clear roads to to battle it out on. But, like, it's basically just you against this weather. And so getting through the city is just going to be a long, hard slog that leaves you drained and tired by the time you are... Uh, by the time you're reaching the edges of, of Castle Ward and heading towards this bookshop. Um, and also, like, you know, you're, everything's ringing. Um, those of you that cast spells, uh, you remember that if it requires an auditory component, you're going to have to do a flat five check. Um... If you if you fail it, the action is just lost. You lose the spell slot. But we should be able to like act. Uh, I mean, are we able to like talk to each other in the storm if we're close together? 
if you're really close together, you can shout and be heard. This is the deafening is just kind of like after it's all over, you know, like you've just gone through so much that you know it's imposing this kind of penalty. Um, if you okay. get somewhere that is far enough away from the storm, I'll remove the deafening condition. But as long as it can be heard, like it's just, you, you know, how when you're, I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever been out into a really bad thunderstorm and not not been like under cover or something like it seems like it goes on for hours that your that your head is ringing from that it's intense i i, I did a few hurricanes out in florida boy howdy All right. um when you say an audible component does that include verbal casting yeah anything that requires like verbal casting because you have to be able to hear yourself to to do it so it's a flat five check, which just means you roll a d20. If it's under five, the it's lost. It's not good. Huh. Yeah, I, I think like every one of my spells just about. I don't. I I don't think that's. I mean, if you want to make that how it works, I don't think you need to be able to hear yourself. I think the the, the power is in the words. But if you want to rule it that way, I'm totally fine with that. I'm pretty yeah, sure that's the way that it reads. None of. I mean, verbal does not say anything about that, but. Yeah, auditory. Like I know, like you know, stuff like demoralize is auditory, or like other actions that actually involve speech. Uh. Maybe like a like, spell, like I'm command. Not. There, there's like some Certainly stuff. Certainly can't like help each other has with the here. But um, I feel bad for Nen because all of my verbal components are replaced by mental components by virtue of being a psychic. So. Yeah, I I cannot cast a single spell without having a one in four chance of losing it. Yeah, there's already a thing that does that though. The stupefied condition just gives you like that flat check to lose spells uh i'm honestly i i'm not it i it's not the hill i'll die on i'm more concerned about the perception so we'll just leave off the part about spells with the verbal components i i do think that it applies because in in most cases if you can't hear yourself cast it says something in most monster entries like a banshee scream and stuff it says that it, it has that effect that if you can't hear you can't cast but that's fine. I just the perception one is the one that matters most to me. Um, you guys are entering into Castle Ward. You uh, have a vague. You've not really visited this part of the city too many times, but you have a vague recollection of where Darkhaven Bindings is. And as you're approaching it, uh, in the midst of this storm, in the howling rain, you know, like the boards and shingles of buildings are flying around you in the air, and you are having to shout. Uh, in order to hear one another. Um, I do want you to make some perception checks for sight. So the, these would not be at minus two? Uh, no, they would not. Okay. Per perception wow. using... Uh, I guess... It's, it's, it's just, just always, always perception. perception. All right, you guys rolled really well. Um, as you guys are approaching Darkhaven Bindings, which is a very large bookshop in Castle Ward, uh, you notice that there are some lights inside, and near the curtains of the windows on both sides, both flanking sides of the building, um, there you, you know, you probably check it th very thoroughly, uh, but you're certain that you see shadows in those windows. Um, there's someone keeping watch out. Uh, it is a two-story building, um, and you are free to approach it how you wish. Uh, is there a side of... I, I, I think I remember climbing up like, uh, like a tree nearby or something like that. Is there a, uh, is there a side that doesn't have, like, any windows or has, like, a, uh, uh, there definitely is, there are sides of the building that don't have windows. The tree is next to those windows. That was how you guys had originally overheard, um, 
that conversation. Uh, you have the element, you've got like a lot of stealth because of the storm as well. Uh, but, you know, as your client, you know, if you're going to start trying to scale the building, um, it's going to be very difficult with the rain and the wind. Any windows on the ground floor? Yeah, there's some there's some small windows, and of course there's a you know a very large door and a door in the back, um, but it, it, you would assume that they would be locked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do we see any uh, guards or otherwise on the ground floor? Uh, not from this vantage point. It doesn't uh, can't you can't see every nook and cranny through the windows. Like there is some light that is emanating from within uh, the arcanum, but not. Uh, not enough to where you can get a full view of everything going on, but it, you don't think you see any, anyone on the ground floor from your vantage points. You're you're very aware that from the sides of the building with windows that there's at least two people who are watching. Uh, the from the top <clears throat> floors, I mean. Uh, before we kind of you know expose ourselves as we're approaching. Ash will, uh, you know, kind of bellow out. It's like I've, uh, I've got a trick up my sleeve I've been saving. Uh, it's, uh, it's an invisibility, uh, an invisibility sphere. Where as long as we stay close, I can keep all of us from sight, but it's, uh, <laughs> it'll take most of my, uh, remaining power for the day to use it, so... I can only do it once. What? <laughs> I said I can only do it once. You can do what once? <laughs> just, just let me know if you, if you don't feel like we have a a better shot here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's probably a good idea. Um, I think that's a good idea, actually. I mean, I have been I have been sitting on this for a minute, so if we are if we are planning on like storming this building, I mean, Nen, do you have like do you have like a fireball left? Can you just chuck one in there and we all come in afterward? Uh, uh, <laughs> Nen, like. As you ask, Nin, just go like lean in, hear what you're asking, and just look up at you and grin and motion towards his like a, a a pouch under his cloak, where he does have one dragon powder bag remaining. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> a rainy day fund, huh? Well, I mean, seems appropriate. Um, but yeah, so I, I guess maybe as the group starts to approach, Ash will weave his invisibility. uh, yeah, the sphere. So it's a ten-foot emanation from him, any number of creatures within range, so we'll have to kind of stay close to each other. And it lasts for ten minutes, so enough time to kind of at least approach and get in yeah uh you guys can guard yourselves from the prying eyes of all of the the guards in the windows uh, but the act of getting in how do you intend to do that you're gonna bust the door down are you gonna try to unlock it uh what's your what's your plan here well we can approach unencumbered so you know peek inside a window see what kind of you know Cards we have. Uh, I'm fine trying to just unlock the door. Okay. You're going to, uh, you know, through the windows near the back. The light is coming from like a few candelabras that, have, that are still lit. You know, there's flickering shadows about. You can see those two men on the uh, the ramparts of the second floor. Uh, they're wearing dark garments and uh, 
look, you know, they've, with their faces covered, and near the back is the mage for hire that you were not able to capture at the adder's nest all those months ago. Uh, I, we don't see people up top, but I'm assuming... Like, yeah, is this there. like the ground floor that we're seeing? Uh, you're seeing both floors, uh, but yeah, you you can't see the assassins proper. Um, they're you know that they're there because you saw them from the windows, but they are uh, you know that they're up there. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm guessing like this on the sides here is like upper level, and then the table and stuff is like ground floor. Yes, exactly. Right. Shout out to Eightfold Paper. I love their maps. Yeah, this one's a good one. Like I, I've I've not been able to like maintain it, but I've donated to their Patreon a couple times just because they got some good stuff. Nice. Um, I I know we've already passed it, but I did uh, find the auditory trait uh, does exist on some spells, and it, it it's exactly what you would think, like uh, things like message. Uh, power word kill, power word stun, um, bullhorn, like things that require you to be heard. Probably command. Uh, yes, yes. Soothing oh, words, probably. Uh, biting words is definitely. Uh, I don't see soothing words, but. No, then we've figured that out for the next time, and we ruled it good for this time. Again, I yeah, just wanted sorry. the perception on hearing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so seeing this, uh, it looked like if we open the front door, there's going to be too many people kind of looking at it. We do have the, the back door to try as well. Is that like yeah, a, the, not quite as big a door? Well, there's still pretty large doors. They're, um, you can kind of see them on the map. They're to the left and right of, like, right below the mage. Oh, okay. And I'm, like... Not that, I'm not going to say it's impossible or anything, but because it is a hurricane, if you open these doors, like, you're going to need to, like, brace them for them not to go flying open when the wind catches them. I mean, that sounds, that sounds like you, like, uh, I mean, if we're just want like, are we just wanting to open a door? I mean, I, I, I feel like we have a, an advantage here if we open the door and it and like there's just like a somebody inside that sees a door open and nobody in it it's a little, little suspicious <laughs> I mean unless they think the door just got blown open by the wind well I mean, they not, won't see anything uh, that's fair and I guess I, I, either way we'll be able to kind of bust in and take them by surprise uh are we trying to just, what, capture them ideally? Knock them out? Tie them up? Yeah, Ziggy, Ziggy will tell you that um, as soon as you guys act, he's gonna he's gonna bust in probably through a window or one of these doors, and he's going to uh, head head straight for that mage, take to try and take uh you know take him out. That's probably a good target both as being the most threatening and probably being the most valuable as a uh, as a captive yeah we got some vendetta right right how you want to do this Ziggy we'll take the door and you slip around to jump in a window once we uh, divert the eyes That's that's also fine. I mean, there's no w as far, as far as we can see, there's no windows near him. So I wouldn't. I mean, are there windows basically on the on the lower level near these as well? Yeah, there's like the the the, the door the pro door proper is like you know kind of a glass door, and then there's another set of windows underneath the um, underneath the the ramparts there in the same positions. There's a there's a this is a glass door essentially then. Not that one, the one at the south south part of the map. Gotcha. Uh, like these are just big, big windows. Uh, 
the the south part of that map is a is a large glass door. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. So how how do y'all want to do this? I think we can definitely get in. Do we want to, you know, break a window, divert eyes that way while we slip in a different way? I have a question, real quick, Luke. Uh, if we're looking through these windows, do we see anything up on the ceiling? Are there is there like a window or any like like is there like a chandelier or like any any like thing like dudes like hiding up on the ceiling? <laughs> Uh, as far as you can tell, no, but we'll, we'll say that there's a chandelier kind of in the center of the room, if you want to do something heroic with that, um, but... If you Errol Flynn that chandelier, I will give you my hero point. <laughs> yeah, um... You guys can go ahead and drag yourselves towards any entrances you think you're gonna appear through or be going towards. Where is the the back door located? Is it this one or is it underneath one of these windows? Yeah, I kind of like this back door because it's very close to our target. And in, just remember that yeah, in this, order this for this the... This looks like, a, like stairs going down or something? Uh, for, for the purposes of what we're doing, it's just another door. Just, just, another um, door. just remember, if you split up, you're not in the invisibility sphere. Right? Yes. Yeah, I... Yeah. I think so. Well, I mean, do we? Can we? Te can I tell if this door is locked? Yes. Yeah. I mean, once you guys get close enough to examine the doors and all these windows, and assuming kind of creeping around under the guise of the sphere, um, all the doors are locked, uh, and uh, probably except for the glass door, like the two on the sides are barred. Um, and that has probably as much to do with the security of whatever's going on here tonight, as well as just the fact that it's a hurricane. And... Mm, Alright, okay. I mean... Then... So this one over here looks barred, plus locked. Yeah. Mm. I'll, uh, I'll... Well, on your signal, I'll, uh, I'll give it a little, uh, give it a little unlocking. Just let me know whenever you're ready. <clears throat> well, are we ready to go in? <laughs> guns blazing? Nothing else to do. <laughs> Glances at me. <laughs> yeah, guns. <laughs> Smoke them yep. if you got them, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess go ahead. We'll go ahead and just roll initiative. Uh, because as soon as this kind of kicks off, it's going to turn into a fight. Um, mm -hmm. I guess this would be initiative using. I'm assuming you guys are trying to do this quickly, um, so probably, probably initiative using dex, whatever your best skill with dex is. Uh, yeah, it makes sense, best. like a like a stealth or something. Yeah, I'm gonna be using a stealth here. And then these are all that. Uh, minus two with the uh, no, it's not skill deafens. Deafens. I I don't deafen gives you minus two to skill checks. It's it just says minus two to initiative and checks perception that checks. Down. perception yeah. checks for initiative. Uh, I see. Okay. Um. So if we do stealth. There it is. And click my character. Initiative. We almost managed to roll perfectly to <laughs> be in order. <laughs> uh, 
Is everybody on the sheet? Mm. Yep. All right, Ziggy. Just as a reminder, we are all currently suffering from negative three AC and yep. negative and three saves. to all saves. Yep. Uh, all right. Um, does unlocking the door count as one of my actions? Yes. Um, I'm not going to make you roll a thievery check. The lock is not so hard to take down, uh, but you're, the problem is the door, that door, uh, the two in the back are then barred. With these two? Yes. Okay, so, so it'll take one of my actions essentially to unbar it as well, right? Yeah, you'll have to break it down. Uh, or unless you've got a tool that you could use. I mean, I have a crowbar. Sounds like it. Uh, it's going to be just an athletics check. So is this two actions to open the door? Is this, is this what I'm hearing? Yeah, you're, you did one <laughs> to do the lock, and now you need to break the, the bar. Um, I'll give you a thievery check if you'd prefer it. Uh, I think it's either finagling it using uh, you know, skill with the crowbar, or it's like literally just shattering it. No, I think it's going to be pure strength here. Oh yeah, that door, like that... Uh, the bar on the door just cracks, and as soon as it does, unless you're going to try to, like, like hold on to the door to stop it from flying open, it, the door is going to just fly open, and then it's just, an like, the, the the mage who's standing nearby, like, looking over, like, sees, just sees an empty door and nothing standing behind it, and the bar falling down. Uh, yeah. I... Ziggy is going to brandish it, brandish his horse chopper, and he's going to uh, sprint forward at this uh, at, at Sarah Lom here and say, uh, "We missed you." <laughs> and he's going to get up right next to him, and I don't have any other action, so uh, that's a. Uh, I've, I've sacrificed, sacrificed two, two actions, actions to get this door open for you guys. Uh, do something. <laughs> I can imagine Sarah Love's face. Because you, you don't stop being invisible until you have passed the 10 foot mark away from Ash. So you appeared like around here, like this brazier somewhere. And, and as you appeared out of thin air saying that, holding yeah, a fucking horse chopper. <laughs> yeah, with the chopper. So uh, the way that I'm going to uh, interact with this, because they would hear the, the, you know, the door slamming open and the, the crowbar that was used to pry off the, the board. I'm going to take away two actions on this first turn from everyone in the combat. Uh, the Ziggy, as you're kind of running in, you know, horse chopper, like, leveled over a shoulder, getting ready to swing. Um, one of the shadows near the windows starts to move, but they're clearly, like, reacting, you know, like, you know, they're fumbling as they're turning around to see you emerge out of it. And all they can really do is kind of get to a another position in the shadows before they kind of just disappear into the darkness. Uh, but nothing, like, no arrows or anything fly out. Sounds good. That's, I mean, I, yep. All right. Uh, the the mage, uh, as you are approaching Ziggy, again, he's just completely taken off guard. He was, like, staring into that, like, floating brazier where all the, the papers and uh, pieces of parchment are going. You know, he turns around, like, wild-eyed, and is just going to, like, try to take cover. He's going to, like, he's just going to move and try to put... A little bit of distance as he, you know, is like backpedaling away from you, but that's all he can do. If you have attack of opportunity, you can take it. I don't. All right, Meep. Uh, the door is open. Uh, you have all three of your actions. All right, I'm going to 
be I forget I can do like partial move and then finish move after doing other stuff is that correct no uh you every action you take is one action so wherever you finish uh, moving that finishes a move action all right i'm gonna move into this corner and i'm gonna shoot at this mage uh all right give me that shot yeah that is a hit and he's uh so it's just the 13 then no that's the crit on him actually oh oh my god and he get it oh, that's that's what? gonna that's gonna kill him uh outright <laughs> you can describe it me <laughs> the I, think, I think i think me runs in becomes you know visible around here she darts into the corner behind her monkey friend lines it up takes the breath and like a trained sniper just lets it loose hits him dead in the forehead and as soon as it does her mouth just drops she is shocked <laughs> yeah his brains just splatter <laughs> against the wall and like they're still like on fire like the gray matter is like hit one of the the bookshelves behind him and is still like sizzling and smoking where his body just like drops like a pile of bricks Do you have another action? <laughs> uh, Ziggy is going to, in the in the like half second he has, he's going to be like, "Fuck yeah, me!" <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then um, she's gonna reload. <laughs> Do it again next round. Reload. <clears throat> All right, uh, Ash. What the fuck? Uh, yeah, Ash is going to head in and see. I guess he he saw where these other guys are at, right? They're in the upper level. Yeah. You can uh, use an action to try to perceive them. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I can go ahead and just go upstairs. This would be like, this would be my movement here, basically, to come to this upper level. Uh, and I guess I'll use maybe an action to see if I can perceive them. Uh huh. You cannot make them out in the in the shadows of the upper of the upper level. There's uh, a lot of um, there's a lot of dark. It's very dark at this point <clears throat> in this section. There's these kind of like billowing long uh, curtains that are around, and uh, they're just uh, like you're looking around. Like you, you feel like one's close by. Like you know the hair on the back of your neck is standing up, but you can't see them. Mm, okay. Uh. Well, I think. I can at least do this. I think I can use my final action to shield. Okay. And I believe I should still have my sphere up since I haven't done any hostile actions yet. Like, I at least should, should still be hidden. Does invisibility sphere require it to be sustained? It does not. It's just a flat duration. I know it said it's um... Maybe ten minutes. Okay. Um, that's Once your the encounter begins, creatures remain invisible until at most the end of the first round, at which point the spell will end. So at the end of the round, you'll become invisible. All right, Nen, you are that up. Is I will step into here, kind of using the, the door frame as, as some cover, since I can't see them. And I will, I guess, uh, hold a ray of frost to try and shoot at anyone I can see, if, if an assassin were to make an attack. 
Okay. Uh, and then it'll be Ziggy's turn again. All right. Um, where is uh, where is that chandelier at? It's in uh, like the center of the room. We'll say between like right above those two tables, like where they meet. Okay. All right. Uh, Ziggy is going to. He's going to run. Let's see, what's my speed? Yeah, I think he's going to sprint uh, here, and then he is going to. Uh, then he's going to use the rest of his move. Far, how far up are these? About 10 feet. Okay, he's going to go... He's going to go here, and then 10 feet up, and then another 5 foot to move into this space, and then he will... Uh, okay, so once you... You're, as you're... As, as soon as you get up those stairs, and then you turn into that corner, like, you just run into someone stepping out of the darkness. Like, they're right on top of you right there, on that square. Okay. I will. I can. I can fight while climbing. I'll just. I'll just hang on at the edge. Okay. Sure. Uh. I, yeah. So I think Ziggy's going to like clamber up this, and as he sees the um. As he sees this uh this guy there, he he brings the the like the haft of it over his shoulder and comes and tries to come down with a a big uh big overhead swipe here uh, just to be clear uh -huh. you're aware of his presence in there like the danger of his presence you can't actually see him i, I can't see him but i'm in the same space as him you because these are five foot squares like you don't take up five feet but like you know that someone's in that general direction like, okay you... then i will move on to the stairs here and i will seek in this direction Okay, I believe that's just a perception check. I don't think there's a specific skill for it. It's it's yeah, it's perception. It's it's a seek action. You can only you seek in a cone. All right, you're gonna Ziggy. You're going to see both of them as you're kind of coming up the stairs, and you notice the the threat and the danger in that area. Or sorry, you do a cone, so just that one. I mean... Okay. Alright, do you still have an action, Ziggy? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, no, I don't. No. Alright, then it is the Assassin's turn. Uh... The one nearest to Ash can't see him, but they can see the other people down below. So he's going to run there and take a shot at Meep from his hidden spot. end after like the first round of, of combat breaking out so it should have yes. just before ziggy took his turn you should have reappeared oh, then it'll uh come through the shadows towards uh towards ash with a poisoned blade <clears throat> that's more like it <laughs> hell yeah It is going... That's actually a critical with the 30. Does it have the deadly dice in the crit already? I think it does.
I am gonna shoot. Wait, actually, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me. I think it's a free action to do my. Let me, let me, let me do this real quick. <laughs> Okay, it is not a, okay, 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 yeah, so I, I do block some of this damage, um, I may just have to, I may just have to block. Yeah, that's 40 altogether, and then I'll need a 40. Yeah, I think, I I think I'm just going to completely shatter the shield to block 20 instead of blocking 10. So I'll only take 20, and then it's, it would kind of save. Fort. Uh, fort. Okay, this is at minus 3. You can do it. Is oh, that, not bad. Is, is the 23... Yeah, the 23 the... makes it. So you, uh, you feel like, you know, everything goes, like, after that blade hits you, you know, everything goes, like, real dark for a second. Uh, like, you know, feel like you're almost about to pass out and, like, like go hurtling down these steps, or this ladder that you're kind of climbing on. Um, and, like, for just a second, like, you, you know, the, as the blade is being pulled out of probably your side or something, uh, that assassin just kind of, like, just vanishes backwards, like Homer back through the hedge. <laughs> <laughs> Homer back through the hedge. I like that. And uh, you don't know where he goes because you're deafened. All right. The other assassin, however, doesn't have the element of surprise here. He's going to draw his rapier and take a slice at Ziggy. Alright, I'm going to nimble, nimble dodge. Still a hit. Okay, it's just uh, nine piercing. Um, and then he is going to take a movement action and just kind of dive off of the side. You watch him do this, like, into the shadows down below, and then it's going to try to vanish into them. As, uh, as he makes this attack, does that trigger my held action for rare cost? You can't see him. Your passive perception is not high enough to get over his stealth. Okay. So he doesn't he doesn't break stealth by making the attack. No. Okay. Uh, he um, when he lands, you would have had an opportunity when you heard him land, but you're deafened. Uh, and then he's going to try to slip back in the shadows from where Ziggy saw him. Uh, so you give me a perception check. Yeah, as that as oh, that yeah. all happened so quickly, uh, like you know him just kind of like rolling off the side. You know he's down there. You can shout out like his location that he's on the ground floor, but you lose track of him. So we know which, um, because he's hidden, we know which space he's in? Uh, you know the direction in which he fell. Uh, if he has the hidden condition, we know which space he occupies, but little else. Yeah, uh, there's actually a, a mechanic where if you try to attack a hidden creature, it's a DC 11 to, to get it. It's like you need that, it's like a 50-50, basically, whether you can actually connect, because you don't really know but you kind of know so i'm confused because it's like i had him dive over the side to break line of sight and then go into the shadows so, so once, once you, you enter, enter combat you can't you so there are there are 
there are like three stealth statuses. There is unnoticed, undetected, and hidden. Uh, once you actually enter combat and you've been seen, you can only be hidden after that. Uh, which means that you can you can you can still hide and you can still hide and we don't know exactly like where you are, but we know which space you're in. Yeah, this is the text for hidden. It basically says that, like, e even if you know where the creature's at, if they're hidden to you, like, you're flat-footed against them, and you can't even target them with anything unless you pass a DC-11. Okay, then I'll tell you where he's hidden. If there's another assassin that we ha that neither of us have seen... Uh, then they can be then they can be unnoticed, which means that we we don't know where they are at all, and we'd have to use a seek action to find them. Yeah. So the the assassin that attacked Ash is still unnoticed. Und undetected. Okay. Yeah. Undetected. Um. I know, I know, I know it's like yeah, yeah, fucking it's... crazy. It's like there's <laughs> unnoticed means like we have we don't even know that you're in this room. Okay, uh, I think I'm getting onto it. It's a little more complicated than I would like, but um, did you guys see? Where, do you see where I pinged for the assassin that attacked Ziggy? You can put him in the space, but we just can't hit him unless we make unless we make a check. You can put like a little marker on him if you want. I feel or, like I want to keep him not on the board because even seeing his token is going to cause you guys to sort of act differently than you would. Okay, w w can you ping it one more time for me? This right here? No, I'm, I'm pinging it on the other side. Oh, oh, he's being there. <laughs> okay, so he dived out this way. He's like under Ash's location. Okay. Uh, Meep, it's your turn. Okay. Um, and because of my passive perception not being high enough, I never saw him at all during any of that unfortunately not his uh you have to be a, right now it's a 25 or for that one it's a 28 i think um Meep is gonna swap to hand crossbow and take a shot at where the one that attacked ziggy is Okay. Uh, so roll a d20. That that does do it, but I don't think you're. Yeah, I don't think a, I don't think a twelve is gonna do it. Let me check. Yeah, the twelve's not gonna do it, unfortunately. Um, you do maybe like see in the shadows, like someone, like you know, one of the shadows kind of just flickering a little bit as the crossbow goes over their shoulder, but never get a, a real clear sight of it. All right. Um, I think I'd just like to reload and try again. All right. Uh, I'm gonna assume that you just dropped the gun to the floor then. Uh, otherwise, because you, you switched between weapons, which would have been an action. Uh, no, then I guess I didn't take the second attack. I would have been in reload. Or, or hand crossbow has like reload, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So then the second attack doesn't happen. All right, Ash. <clears throat> I'm gonna assume that Ziggy did call out to where the the one yeah, is. Yeah, one hundred percent. He'd be like, they are directly below Ash. Well. 
though. I mean, I guess that's fair. Ash can can try his luck. side here after getting stabbed and uh, I guess he's gonna try to fire off a uh, like a telekinetic um, projectile here so I guess we'll do the, uh, the flat check not gonna do it he hurls like a chair uh over there but it kind of just slams against the wall all right and then are you sustaining the shield uh i am not i i basically expended it to get twice the hardness out of that first block gotcha. so, yeah yeah she, shield is is down uh as we go to Nen's turn, uh, because Nen is not really taking an action, uh, they're not aware of Nen right now. Okay. Um, what would I have to... Is it a seek action, you said, to try and raise my perception? Yeah, you can do a seek action kind of in a cone in the direction that you want. Um... They have really high stealth. Um, you could just blast that area. I don't think you can miss if you AoE the area. Uh, is it is it like dark here too? Is that part of what is aiding the stealth? Is like just the just the conditions. Yeah, there are like candelabras, but like I said, it's like flickering shadows and like the, again, the windows of all the buildings you guys have been going across, I've said this multiple times, are like covered. There's like no starlight coming in and it's also very loud. So uh, ordinarily I would be giving you guys or giving them less on, penalties on their stealth for just the sounds, but because you're deafened and with this storm, that's what's really hurting you. Right. Um, so, d not to metagame, just, just out of mechanics. Uh, the sea invisibility spell would not help because they are not invisible, they are just hidden. No, you would want something like, uh, like, like glitter dust or something like that. There, I think there's a couple of spells that, that do reveal, um, creatures if you, if you AoE them with it. Gotcha. Um, I'll, I'll give you guys this, um, if you could, like, you know, the classic trick of, like, throwing flour or something, or something bright, you know, like paint or something that would be easier to see in the darkness, um, that's, would make it pretty hard for them to hide. I could just try and set him on fire. Fires? That, a yeah. good way? <laughs> yeah. If you set him on fire, uh, I'm pretty sure he gives off light. Which means that <laughs> it's pretty hard to hide. He could just try and put himself out, though. Also, just if you could brighten the area in a way um, that that would, you know, remove many of the places where it'd be possible for him to hide.
Yeah, like I maybe ignite fireworks would do it, but if I'm gonna ignite fireworks, then I, I might as well just burning hands because I mean fire's bright, so. Um, and there's plenty of flammable things in here that would probably catch fire from it, so. big is this cone? Uh, a 15 foot cone with a range of 120. Uh, yeah, so. What does that mean? 15 foot cone with a range of 120? Is it burning hands? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Where, what part of the spell is saying 120? Having a range of 120 seems weird to me. I don't see a range of 120 level? on burning hands on the... Yeah, I see just 15 foot cone. It should emanate, you know, from your hands. Yeah, it emanates from a corner. For some reason, this copy that's in the staff says range 120 feet. Uh, hmm. just ignore the, ignore that. This is cool. cool. Uh, so we want to do a cone. It's the big cone, too. The, the 90 degree? Correct. Oh. Uh, but a big cone. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, whenever it says cone and it does not specify, it's 90 degrees. Jesus. Yeah. And... <laughs> I learned this recently whenever I also did a burning hands. <laughs> um that was the the square that you said he was in, right? That is correct. Yeah. Uh so I guess following Ziggy's pointing finger, uh Nin is going to like lean in through the doorway with his staff and whispering some some words of power. Uh, a cone of fire is going to emit from it, uh, All right. filling this area. This is me. I'm assuming a dex check. And I'm doing a level two. Yep. Basic, basic awesome. reflex. So before I roll this, because they're not aware of Nin, I'm giving them a penalty because they have a very high one. Uh, yeah, they're still gonna make that. Uh, I was gonna give them a minus five. Take half. Okay, so that's gonna be half seventeen. We'll give them roundup in players' favor. So nine, nine. <laughs> All right, and then you still have an action. Then uh, I will. I'm pretty sure that. Pathfinder's flame doesn't have like that stipulation that D&D's does. Like it just it just is regular fire. So that entire area is going to light up. Well they they have I guess some things do persistent fire damage, which is like you are on fire. Same thing with like the weed and scenarios and all that. Yeah, uh, if you want to Nin, draw you can just draw like a space on the map that is like definitely lit up with flames. Like I'm not saying that it's like licking and going to destroy the building or anything, but just that it's much brighter in that section. Yeah. Um, I think I can linger, do this, and then I will draw a uh, freehand. So make sure that you're having it uh, snap to corner instead of center for that oh for the cone yeah oh okay uh it doesn't need to be exact for what we're just trying yeah, to put on the map is, this is cool though i haven't seen where you can mess with the measuring tool like that yeah it's i i had to i realized Not that i didn't corner. have that for a little bit and it was really weird there you go okay and then i'm just gonna We'll just do a line from here to here to here to here. 
And then that should now mean... There we go. Excellent. Ooh, excellent. All right. And then then you've got one more action, and then it'll be Ziggy's turn. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, can I just... I, I Is taking cover in the door frame an action? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, unless Justin says something otherwise. I mean, you have to be prone to take over. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's it's kind of... Like, uh, there's yeah, no, like, there's no, like, base dog dodge action, unfortunately. Oh, there is, yeah, drop prone. But, but that's also an action. And then take cover is also an action. Two. I mean, if you want to drop prone, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> take cover is also an action. Yeah. Um, I guess there's an action to, like, sneak. So you can try to hide yourself. <laughs> they, they probably know exactly where I am now. <laughs> I can't imagine that would help much. Yeah, yeah. You could use an action to seek for the other hidden one, maybe. Or shield. I don't have a shield on. I don't think. It's kind of true. Yeah, hide. It's not sneak. Sneak is when you're already hidden. But if you're not hidden, you can try to hide. Uh, can you cast multiple spells in a turn? Yeah. As long as yes. you have the actions. Yes. Okay. Uh, I will um, uh, whisper uh, a prayer to um, uh, my patron. And uh, try to give myself guidance. <laughs> okay, uh, Ziggy, you uh, can see that uh, see that assassin lit up uh, amongst the the flames that have started to wreathe the, the bottom floor of the building. All right. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I want to drop this chandelier on him. I'm gonna say this. Sh You'd have to like. Get it swinging in that direction. I'm gonna um, jump onto it, swing it in that direction, and and smash the, the the link that's holding it up with my with my uh my horse chopper. Okay, so I'm gonna say one action that's, to that's... leap towards the chandelier, one action to start moving it in that direction, and then you'll have to slice it down. Um, don't. I guess this is gonna be this is gonna be a pretty hard athletics check. I got you. Eh, is that enough? I. I mean, I can leap onto it. Like that's like I have the amount of range with, with a, uh, with powerful leap and. So I think that's easy. That's easily enough to jump onto that. Yeah, this is for like the whole going through this entire thing. And actually it probably should be acrobatics, not athletics. Okay. I can I can do that as well. Uh I'll hear a point though. If this is for the whole thing then <laughs> Alright. You're going to succeed, but you also are going to take damage from this. Um, so I'm going to let you decide what dice we roll, um, because you also will take the damage from whatever hits. Um, how big of an impact do you want? Um, I want to say this is fireball. We're going to take 66. Cool. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, there's no there's no saving throw for this, uh, so roll me sixty six. As long as he doesn't get one either. Uh, fire and glass, just. Be... <laughs> fire and glass, uh, boys. Fire and glass. <laughs> That's pretty intense. 
Uh, what I will have you do, though, and I'll have him do this as well, we're going to do reflex saves to see if, like, both of you are prone and restrained from this. All right. Oh, no. Okay, uh, so Ziggy, you're, you go with this heroic moment. You can also have a hero point as you uh, leap, off the, uh, leap off the second floor onto the chandelier, swing it, and cut it down. But you kind of get one of, probably your tail or something, gets caught in all the, the iron bars as it's falling. And once it crashes down into the center there, uh, you are currently prone and restrained. You'll have to kind of get yourself out of the wreckage. He's able to just, like, narrowly, by luck itself, just kind of end up in between the bars and is not pinned by it. Uh, but you both took some significant hits from, from that. All right. All right, the ghost is kind of up for the guy in the center here. Uh, he, I'm going to consider all of that to be pretty difficult terrain. He's going to use two of his actions just to get to Ash and try to, like, climbing over top of Ziggy and over the top of this burning wreckage, but using two actions just to, like, j leap up onto, the, onto that uh, table right next to it, like, kind of flipping it over on his very dexterous fleet and, like, come stabbing in with his rapier again. That is a hit. Okay, I believe that's. Uh, he's not had the chance to uh, put any kind of potion or anything on there, so that's just that just is what it is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, on the opposite side of things. Uh, a, you'll, well, you won't hear anything, but you might see uh, some of the, the candle flames flickering as something moves, and then a shot is going to ring out into the back towards Meep. I guess a 30 hits you. Rock? Uh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, both of these hit me. Uh, the 30 is a crit. Oh, the the rapier I don't think was at you. Oh okay. Yeah, it's just the the thirty is a crit. Okay, so it's just a shot um, for the composite. So you'll take 20, 27 damage from the sneak attack and the bow, um, and then uh, unfortunately he's not gonna have a chance to try to get hidden again. So you guys will see him. And then it's your turn, Meep. Alright. Um. Th this is the one that ran from Ziggy, right? That's the one that shot at me? Uh, the blue one shot at you, yeah. The red one is the one that Ziggy hit? Like yeah. Fire. Fire. Okay. yeah. Um, I think we're going to do the hot swap. We're going to drop the crossbow for the gun and take a shot at him. Uh, I might hero point that attack. That's gonna hit, uh, just barely. Um, all right, then damage. Um, 
And then... Oh, sorry, let me... Okay, we're good. Uh... Oh, shit. I think she's gonna... Combat medic herself. I'm gonna go for the expert level version of it. Okay. Uh, where is my medicine? Nice. Nice. Okay. All right, I believe that's Meep's turn. Ash, uh, you're up. You guys have interacted them enough to know that they don't have attacks of opportunity, so I just want to give you that option. Right, right. Uh, let me see. I think... <laughs> Ash is uh, gonna begin to to kind of rage out a, a little bit here. Um, you know, they're covered in you know a thick ichor, rain, a healthy amount of their own blood, and uh, you know as their eyes kind of flicker, face rages into a snarl. They're uh, going to unleash a full magic missile. Uh, let's say maybe two, I'm assuming the guy in front of me is hurt pretty bad, so I'm, I'm hoping maybe two and one. Uh, the guy in front of you is bloody, that's about it. Okay, okay. May, maybe better to just go all the way. Yeah, this is also the guy that's, that's been messing me up, so. Um... And it's going to be a three-action magic missile. So three of the 1d4 plus one. It just rolled it once. I don't know if you want me to just roll this multiple times. Um, I don't... I think that it tends to work in the favor of the player if you roll it multiple, but I don't know if the spell says that's the way it works. Uh, yeah, I don't I mind mean... you rolling it. I'm fine just doing four times three. Is it four times three? Well, it's it's three misses, and each one is one d four plus one, which is what this four is. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Uh, so there's that, and then plus an additional two damage for the unleash. So it'll be fourteen. All right, he's looking like he's getting ready to tire out um, after that, after those bursts kind of hit him in the chest. Uh, and since that's your three actions, it'll be your turn. And we'll go to Nin. Yep. Um, I'm a bit sad because I realized uh, far too late that um, it was not adding my bonus damage to Burning Hands um, from... Uh, from neither my ancestry feat burn it, which adds damage to fire, nor my class feat dangerous sorcery, which adds bonus damage to spells uh, that do not have a duration. But what's uh, what's the additional? I don't mind. Uh, it would be one from burn it and two more from dangerous sorcery. So it'd be three points. Okay, I added that. It's your turn. Okay. Um, then I will. Um, uh, I have Rejuvenating Flames, which I will try and cast. Um, y you can... Uh, do cones wrap around corners? I think so. I, I'll check. Fire can't go around corners. It's not a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, Fireball, I think it's around corners. <laughs> it's just a, it's Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I nine, don't nine. think I can quite fit Meep into this as well. Sadly. That's okay, I'm fine. So I guess the, the corner thing wouldn't necessarily matter then. Um, but yeah, so doing it like this, um, rejuvenating flames is like a very, very small version of burning hands. Uh, it does uh, 1d4, sorry, it does 2d4 plus 2 damage to any enemies with a basic reflex save, and then any allies in the area gain 1d4 HP back, uh, and gain a flat plus one bonus status to fortitude saves for the next minute. Jesus awesome. Christ. Awesome. What is the name of that spell? Uh, it is Rejuvenating Flames. Yeah. Yeah, if as long as it doesn't like it, it basically I, I saw a, a thing that just says that if they're inside the cones area, they're hit. But with a basic reflex. Correct. So, uh, we'll roll the. So that is the damage. That is the heal. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so since the basic save, I believe he has a critical success, and we'll just take none. Um, but you got, you got some healing? We all yeah. get a point of healing, then. A one point. Yep. Alright, all right. and then you got one more action, I believe, if you want to take it. Uh... Hey. Can't think of anything. Most of my spells cost two actions, so. Okay, uh, Ziggy, you are prone and restrained. All right. Um. So. Uh. Let's see here. What's the DC to get out of restrained here? Just a ten. I will. I'll do that. Uh, that is a, that's a critical success, right? Yes, that is. All right. So if I crit, if you, let me see. Yeah, critically succeed, critical success. You can, um, you get free and remove the grabbed, uh, immobilized or restrained conditions imposed by your chosen target. Then you can then stride up to five. Yep. So I'll move closer. I will stand up, uh, and I will attack. I imagine, because these are rogue-type creatures, they probably have deny advantage. They do, yeah. Yeah. So, um... I think... Man, I really can't trip these guys either. These guys have crazy reflex. I think I'm just going to try and smack them. That's my turn. Yeah, I, I imagine. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this guy who's in the center here uh, is seeing how things are going. Uh, he's... He, he could probably jump back and keep trying to pick you off from side to side, but he's, he's you know, like, he's dodged quite a few of your attacks. He's starting to bleed out a little... Um, so he's just going to try to take down as many as he can and hope that his ally helps him. He's going to use a... Uh, he's going to poison one of his rapier. So he's going to take out uh, an item manipulation because um, he has his rapier out. And then he's going to apply that. It takes one of his actions. He's going to five foot step towards Nen. And then take a stab at him. Am I? 
I mean, it might possibly take two actions if he doesn't have the poison in his hand. Uh, that's true. Okay, then he's just not going to poison. He's just going to take two stabs at Nen. That is almost a crit. I believe that exactly meets me. Okay, you'll take the damage from those two attacks. That's 23. All right, and then the other assassin is going to just... This is just getting too hairy. They just need to take you guys out. Um, he's going to move here, take a shot with his bow at Ash. That's a hit. Okay. And that's really all? I mean, I, I don't think composite bows require a reload, so I guess I'll take another shot. It, yeah, it shows reload zero, so now. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this one he'll put towards Meep. Brutal. <coughs> uh, Meep, it's your turn. All right. Um, shit. I think I'm going to try to daze the ranged one. They have to do a basic will save. That might not meet your DC. Uh, my spell DC is 21. Alright, so he is dazed. Nice. It's, uh... Uh... But he is flat-footed from dazed, I'm pretty sure. Uh... Well, he didn't crit fail. So, he just takes the damage, I'm pretty sure. Which uh, is... Yeah. 4, I think. I, I don't see the spell. Uh, yeah, I don't, don't see the spell. Spell damage equal to your spell casting ability. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I thought I, I thought I did it. My bad. Uh, did it? Is it? Doing it? Oh. Might be lagging. I had this last time, and it it like popped up like a couple of different checks all at once. Maybe refresh. Yeah, I'm going for the refresh. Okay, do you have any other actions you're going to take besides that meat? Uh, yes. I'm also going to fire a crossbow at the the dazed guy. Alright, give me that shot. Uh, eventually, I suppose that damage will come through. If he is dazed, you should have a plus two. Uh, 13's not going to do it either way. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, the day's damage never came through, it looks like. I'm just gonna... It's just not doing it. I'll just roll it. Jesus lord. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Ash, it's gonna be your turn. It's not rolled, it's just uh, it's just my ability modifier, so it's 4 damage. I didn't ever subtract it. Uh, Ash, it's your go. Are you muted, John? Yes, yes I was. <laughs> okay. 
yeah, sorry about that. Um, I think uh, this this guy has been just a menace. Ash is gonna take a slash here with imaginary weapon to try and put him down here. Um, I guess I don't know if I can make this non-lethal though. It's bludgeon or slash. Yeah. We'll Got one left. We're gonna have to reroll that. Twenty-four. Okay. Yeah, he he specifically, you know, n normally his imaginary weapon is uh, like some some slashing instruments. This one's he's just gonna try to bop him side of the head here and then with the final action uh, he it it does but it's a range of touch so yeah I don't have my spectral hand out this time to be able to, you know, make touch a little bit farther. Uh, but he is going to restore the mind. Uh, and then I think which will be 12 hit points restored. Take it. Um have uh this this vision uh of you know happier times and then sharing some uh you know like some apple bread and sausage and like some warm stew around the camp with ash and uh it makes you feel just way better all right uh, i believe it's your turn then yeah um I suppose, let's see, this man is more than 30 feet away from me, so, um, yeah. Uh, I guess I will just, um, give myself a little bit of guidance with one action, and then attempt to Ray of Frost him with the next two. So go, guidance, Ray of Frost. It'll be a 25 to hit. That'll hit. For 9 cold damage. Um, mm, actually, I hang on, make sure I'm... So, success target just takes normal damage. Yeah, you're. You would need like plus ten to get towards a crit. <laughs> Fair. And it is a cantrip, so it does not get a uh, bonus from dangerous sorcery. And it is not a fire spell, so it does not get a bonus from burn it. Gotcha, Ziggy, you're up. All right. Uh, I am going to dash. Uh stride and i'm going to go for a trip attempt okay um it's, it's his the uh the dc is his his reflex plus 10. uh it's better than his armor it's 29. yeah got this oh no wait oh. is he dazed um so the way the dazed spell worked is he he uh succeeded against it so yeah his... so no. um uh, yeah that's fine i'm just gonna leave it i'm just gonna go for an attack all right that's a hit uh 10 uh, th 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 there's no, that's, that's the wrong precision, but I'm not doing precision to him anyway. 
Alright, then I believe that's your turn. Okay. Things have gotten kind of bad. You guys are not nearly as hurt as you were last round. His ally is down. Uh... He is going to make a run for it. Um, unless anyone tries to stop him, or, or wants to pursue him, I should say. He is going to spend two actions to run up those steps, and then he is going to literally leap out of that window. Any Anybody intent on trying to <clears throat> run him down yeah so i think i think uh i could like dash to here and get maybe one last shot off uh like yeah dash to the window it see, see if you can get that head shot again <laughs> uh, yeah i mean i will i will chase him for two rounds if you I mean, so the way that I'm going to put this is like, he's, I mean, he's not going to be faster than you guys, but if you get separated, I think they have shown pretty clearly, like, Ziggy, if you go out into the storm and everyone doesn't follow you, like, he could probably take one of you down, no problem. I mean... And if you guys want to do the rolls to see if he's it. Going to, if he stands and fights me, then, like, he's not running. That means that everybody else can attack him as well. He, if So he's already outside the building. Unless everyone is following out in the storm and keeping track with him. If just, like, one or two people go and he turns around, like, I don't think there's any way that one person makes it. Uh, I mean, even just a few rounds, I think he'd probably take take some people out. So it's, we always have people run, and it always comes back to bite us. <laughs> There's also, he's jumping from like that second floor. Um, so he takes some damage from that, even if Meep does hit him, and then you guys will be back out in the hurricane. And um, I think, unless all four of you go, I don't think that you can get him. Um, he's got about like 80 hit points left his ac is like 24 and he's got like a plus 20 to his attacks yeah i mean it'll it'll take if he's just trying to get away we're not gonna be able to drop him that easily i don't know if it's i mean i could get a good trip and slow him down a little bit we would really need like uh some type of magical cc i think uh, which, I mean, we can play it out like maybe another another round or two. And I see. mean, if you guys aren't going to commit, then it's not worth it is what he's saying. Right. Uh, I, I, I mean, don't think we'd be able to catch him. Window. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, Ziggy's, Ziggy's not going to Ziggy's not gonna fall him if nobody else is going. So, yet another person gets away. Yeah, but like I mean, Ash was we, saying, but we, like, but I mean, I, we did, well, we did what we did. Like, I don't think he and I would be able to even keep up. Like, my my movement speed is twenty five, so I would not be able to keep up with y'all, let alone to get up the stairs and then jump out a window. Yeah, even with my warp step, I can get kind of to where Meep is at, but then with one more action, I can't really cast anything. Yeah. to like attack at that point and then it's like next round he's farther and i have to like jump out the window to follow him that's not that realistic of an option for me yeah uh that's that's fine ziggy's going to run up to that window and he's gonna shout at the top of his lungs i was told that you would fight to the death fucking coward okay I will we'll say narratively, Meat probably gets shot off. Maybe Ziggy follows him out into the rain for a little while. You know, they have a little bit of a spar, but without all four of you committing to it. Like I said, I just, if you get separated in any way whatsoever, I think he takes down anybody, even in a couple rounds, I think just stat-wise, I think he would beat one or two of you. 
All right. We gonna see him again. All right. Uh. Perhaps. Let's <laughs> check out this mage. And uh. Close the door. Yeah. Close the door. <laughs> I'm gonna start binding this unconscious assassin and just start hog tying him with all the rope we got. Uh, let me. I don't. Unless your thievery is better, let me, let, me get, let me get that. Yeah, get in oh. there. We'll, we're all obviously gonna disarm him of all his, his things, his poisons and weapons and such. Maybe check for personal effects. Mic thing. Uh, whenever someone's ready, I'm going to give you a list of all the things you find between these two figures. Yep. I'll just put it straight into the golden treasure. Or, yeah. or, uh... yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, the things that are going to stand out the most is um, there is a necklace of fireballs, uh, level two. There is an invisibility potion. Uh, there are two giant centipede venoms. There is a lesser dark vision elixir. He has a plus one rapier. He has three simple injury poisons. Two sleep poisons. There's a plus one striking composite short bow with 20 arrows. Uh, the necklace, by the way, was on the mage. Uh, there are... Uh, the mage has a staff of illusion. There are two moderate healing potions. There is a murderer's knot. An iron cube and a sneaky key. Okay, I didn't get uh, a couple of those things. So I've got, I've got necklace of fireballs level two, invisibility potion, two centipede venom, one striking rapier, or one plus one rapier, plus one striking composite short bow. Uh, Staff of Illusion, two moderate healing potions, murderers, not iron cube, uh, sneaky key. What's the what's the thing that I'm missing? You're missing a lesser dark vision elixir. Uh, three simple injury poisons. Two sleep poisons. And then you said uh, you said you got the plus one striking composite short bow with twenty arrows. Uh, then it was Staff of Illusion. Two moderate healing potions. Murderer's Knot, Cube, Key. All right, I still think I'm missing one. I'm going to save this so you can look at it and tell me what I'm missing. Uh, this is what I got. That's what I got. Okay, I got it all. <clears throat> all right. Uh, you don't find any notes. You don't have find any other missives on them. Uh, the the trained assassin uh, that you have taken down, uh, like as you're kind of ruffling through, if you pull off. Uh, like some of his armor as you're like searching his wares and making sure he doesn't have any like lock picks that are you know hidden somewhere uh you do notice an intricate lace of uh geometric tattoos on his hands and his neck uh maybe indicating that he is uh infidian um and he's neither one of these individuals are you on t These markings, though, are they, uh, 
reminiscent of the tattoos that Ciro had? Uh, the assassin does not have that tattoo, but the mage does whenever you examine him more closely looking for something like it. Uh, there was one on his uh, the interior of his wrist. No kind of magical effect happens because he has uh, perished. <laughs> uh, pretty grisly. Um, we'll say that it's probably going to be about 30 minutes or so before the assassin is going to wake up. Go ahead and cheer up with that to bind him. Uh, when he comes to, you know, he'll just give a, a glance around at the, the surroundings for a moment. You know, he'll you see him, like, you know, obviously kind of stretch and feel the sort of bindings that he's in. Um, and then he's, you know, just, just kind of sits quietly. Um, you know, he doesn't doesn't curse your names or anything. Seems, uh, you know, this is part of his profession, so he's just kind of waiting uh, to either see what you want or what you're going to do to him. Where'd your little friend go? I don't have any friends. <laughs> Where did the other fucking guy in this room go? How should I know? Didn't even see him leave. Wish he'd stayed around and put a blade between your ribs. God, I wish he'd had to. So, what do you want? What, how much gold do you need to get me out of this? Is that why we hate raids to be snakes? Pardon, Nash. <laughs> I said, is that why you're running around with these fucking snakes? Aye, that's why. Is there a better reason? Certainly ain't for love in my heart for them. Don't follow it. Don't follow the nonsense going on here on the continent. This is just an average day in Infidia. Well, you're in luck. We happen to, uh, we happen to have a bit of the stuff ourselves. So who hired you on, huh? A man named Jantus Bim. He's in the harbor right now. Jantus Bim. Is that, wait. Yeah, we heard of this isn't, isn't, last isn't that time. The one we put He's the, the one uh, that hired uh, the assassins to ambush us. Mm -hmm. The mercenaries. The yeah, the dwarf mercenaries. <laughs> The ones that hopefully Downscroft is in the midst of uh, dealing with currently. Vim, huh? Does he uh, employ your services directly? To meet with anyone else? Well, the man with the missing half his head now used to work with. He was a little bit more in, uh, in with the snakes you're hunting. Vim's just a middleman. Right. How long have you been part of the crew? Is this a recent job? or uh, About six months. Cost quite a fortune to hire me. Me and my brothers in the 13th rib. It's, uh, well, you know, usually sell my services for about 2,000 gold. Well, you did a number on me, so <laughs> I can't, uh, I can't deny your effectiveness, but, uh, six months, that's quite a while. I'm sure you've seen some of their, uh, hideouts, their, uh, where they like to lay low. And you might be standing right on top of one. I guess that answers why the fuck y'all mooks would be hanging out in this place during all this. Well, it is a storm. I might be willing to tell you more for my freedom. Ash will kind of look around at his uh, companions here. 
Sorry, I was typing, so I might not have caught that. Did you ask him if there was a, a snake hideout here? Or uh, would you ask him that he, that he said yeah, we might be standing uh, yeah, on? Yeah, I asked him, you know, where some of the hideouts might be. He uh, said we might be standing in one. He said he might be willing to divulge a bit more for his freedom. Um, I'm gonna, I guess, start trying to look around for, to see if I can find a any kind of. Yeah, you can make a uh, wheel. I guess you're gonna need to start with just a perception check. Um, if he's willing to tell you that you might be standing on it, but is still like holding up that he might need it like this is like he pr there's probably this is probably pretty yeah. well hidden there's probably a specific book in this bookstore that you have to pull but with a shot looking around i have no idea well i'm not sure how this negotiation really goes in a video but right here you go and tell us before we get you out of these bones It's gonna, I mean, he's gonna look at y'all. Like, um, you know, does it seem seem like you guys are being honest that you let him go if he tells you? I mean, he's not a snake, and he's just a hired killer. If his employer is dead, then he Maybe wouldn't. His employer is not dead. <laughs> they will be though. I mean, he's hired by them. He's probably just gonna go right back to them and tell them that we're here. I'm 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 lying. I I'm letting him deal with it. <laughs> uh, I think Ash will say so. We we came out tonight all this way in the storm. Oh, proud of you. To get a little blood on our hands. Now, I'd say we've done that, but you know, couldn't hurt to add a little more, right? We are not in the finest of moods this evening, so if you want to walk out of here with your fucking throat intact, Jeez. you better start talking. Yeah, I'd use this liar's ring on him, but I, I, I can't. He's, he's, Look, pussy I'm, cat. I'm almost, I'm almost <laughs> certain he's too high of a level. He's 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 higher level than me, so I it's he cannot be charmed. By me. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not, not trying to charm. Uh, I am rolling to intimidate, however. Uh, he's. I mean, he's scared of dying, but he's gonna tell you. But I come from Mesa Adega. I see people thrown in the street and butchered every day. I've killed more men than you will. I'm not afraid of death. The only thing I have to bargain for is my life. And if it's not worth it for you tonight, you can ransack this bookshop until the storm's over and lose all your chances. Hmm. Let's see. I think, uh, I think Ash is actually going to kind of, you know, go through his sack and start thumbing through the, uh, the recipes in Audner's journal, kind of, you know, recounting to himself, like, you know, what, what he'll need, I'm assuming, you know, like, oh, okay, you know, like a thumb, mm-hmm, <laughs> you know. Stuff like that. And Man, like, you, you made know, your you, intimidation you, check. You ain't you, scared. <laughs> you may be uh, useful to us after all. The 13th rib. I mean, do we really think he's going to go back to Vim? Y yeah. After having given us information? 
one hundred. I mean, he's not gonna tell them that he's given this information. He's gonna say, "Oh yeah, I found them. They're they're right there." I mean, I, I feel like Ziggy knows this kind of guy. Ziggy is kind of one of these kind of guys. But I mean, he failed in his job, right? I mean, if we let him go, then he didn't. I mean, he, I'm assuming he wasn't here to kill us. He was here to protect Solomon. And he didn't. So, so he failed in his mission. So, like, how does how does the Thirteenth Rib deal with people who have failed their missions? Could I? I don't know if I'd know that much about the Thirteenth Rib. Is there a check I could do? Uh, unless someone has like lore in Phidia or something they think would be relevant, um, like the most any of you really know is that Thirteen Red were essentially like the most well-known assassins in the, the like in the lands. Um, they're I mean he's saying that it costs two thousand gold just to hire him. So yeah, like if he if he goes back to Vim and tells Vim where we are, then it's kind of a well, why didn't you just kill them? Or if he was protecting Solomon, he's failed at that. And if you're paying someone two thousand gold and they fail, I can't imagine that looks good on your resume. <laughs> And I, like, I, Ziggy 100% needs more, more than that to not kill this guy. Uh, the other one has escaped anyway, so any information he could give Vim is going to go to Vim anyway. I mean, that's true. That just means we should kill him. <laughs> but not killing him gets us the snakes that are downstairs. I mean, unless he just runs out of here. Uh, all right, I'm gonna pick him up, and I'm gonna move him over here. I'm gonna stand right next to him, and I'm going to hold an action to strike him, um, and I'll let you guys untie him if if this is what you're, if this is what the the plan you're wanting to go with. Like I. If we're here to kill snakes, and there are snakes, a hideout of snakes here, this is what we would need to do to continue forward. Unless we think we can find it on our own, which... I get you. Way... I, 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 told you I told you he needs more, and you gave me more. So let's do it. I think he's not the thinking right. man. Let's, let's, let's <laughs> do this. I don't know if we want to let him go just for helping us get into this hideout. There's got to be more. I mean, we've already taken all his stuff. What what else can you tell us, man? Uh, I mean, he would say something to the effect of, you know, like, there's all kinds of things I could tell you about this city. I could tell you about nasty business that's going on unrelated to your current problems. I could tell you uh, people that I've worked for in the city in the past, including some of its members of parliament. Um... You know, I've, I've got all kinds of secrets, but none that are as relevant to you right now as uh, the the people that you're hunting at this exact moment. How about this, then? If we let you go, make sure we never fucking have to interact with you again, alright? Just uh, take jobs outside the city or something. Of course. <laughs> I don't like the way you said that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm telling you. But... Like, like so he's just going to tell you upright, that's a lie. Like, I'm, 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 I'm willing, willing to let this murderer go. But, you know, as we, we better get something out of it. And if, like, uh, you, I'm, I'll tell him straight up. Like, if you if you move an inch out of, uh, out of line once we untie you, like, I will kill you. So, we're doing this? Yeah, I think we're doing this. We can we can undo his bonds. I mean, he's been roused, but I mean, he's bloody. 
I mean, he's, he's you basically don't necessarily have, have to right? let him out of his bonds. You could just have him tell me how to do it. He's not going to tell us unless he unless we let him go. Is is essentially what I'm getting. Is that is that correct, Luke? Yeah, yeah. He's looking for. I mean, he's really searching your faces to see if you're going to if you're lying about letting him go. Um, like, because if he's he, no longer lying. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to determine if we're just going to kill him anyway. Yeah, if you're going to try to kill him anyway, you'll need to make a check against his deception, and then he may decide not to. But if you're if you're adamant that that you are going to set him free, then he'll tell you. Yeah. I mean, this is this is on the you know, if he if he doesn't adhere to the deal, then I'm holding an action. Maybe we can maybe we can make use of this guy. He could maybe bring us a cultist. We 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 are trying to get you. You you don't have the money to hire him. I 100% know this, and he's not going to work for you for anything other than gold. I, I, I appreciate you trying to appeal to his sense of honor, but he has not. It's not even that. I'm just trying to leverage what we have. We, uh, you know, this, this wasn't the captive we were hoping we were. <laughs> but I guess it'll have to. Damn good shot, by the way, mate. <laughs> uh, hey, yeah, I wasn't trying to kill him, but I sure did. I'll let your bloodlust get the better of you, Meep. I, I know how it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think this is the, the most we're going to be able to get out of him, and I think it's valuable enough that it's worth the risk. Yeah, that's fair. All right, let's do it. Okay, so he's gonna tell you with that staff that you picked up, that staff of illusion. He's gonna tell you you need to unscrew, uh, turn the the very bottom of the staff three times clockwise to the left. Then you're going to pull the staff apart into two different pieces, and inside of it is going to be a scroll of paper. And with that scroll of paper, you are going to need to read the words on it. It's a language that none of you speak. Uh, at this, like, roiling bowl in the center. I'll start trying to do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's really just sounding out the words. You know, he'll tell you it, it, you know, it sounds exactly like it's spelled. And once you say the words, uh, this, this bowl begins to move, like, slide out. And there is a manhole that goes down deeper into the city. There's a ladder uh, on it. And um, as you kind of poke your head a little bit down inside, uh, where it's, you know, the, the force of those stone walls are, um, you're going to, like, away, you know, getting your ears away from the storm in this loud building, you're going to hear chanting down below. Right. Tell me, do you follow a god? I follow the ones who lie below. You fucking disgust me, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna, you know, he's gonna, like, put his arms above his head. You know, like, you know, it's not reaching for anything. He's going to make his way to the door. He's going to very slowly, like, unbar one of the doors and then turn the lock. And then he's going to slip out into the storm, shutting it behind him. And, uh, you know, with his wound, you know, clutching his wounds, he's going to head off into the night. And you guys are left with the entrance to a, a cult and an ongoing ceremony. And that is where we're going to end our session. Sheesh. Sheesh. All right. That's, uh... You know, I knew it was going to be a rough night. We did okay. I mean, you did great. What are you talking about? <laughs> Popping noggins and... <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know... 
taking no shit. Think about how much worse that fight would have been if we had to deal with the mage too. 